What is up my friends? Welcome back to a brand new video and today we are taking a look at part four of the Disney Medley Breakdown series. Um, as you know that uh, the, the first couple of parts have kind of been talk, uh, taking a more general approach into the structure of the piece and taking a look at the samples, the actual tools that are used. And then in the last video, I took a look at the string orchestration. So now let's kind of dive into the woodwinds themselves, take a look at how those instruments are laid out, how they were used, and just kind of my personal approach to woodwinds, to be honest. And I personally love woodwinds. They have such a beautiful timbre and texture to them and such a variety of color throughout the whole family as well. I was actually a flute and piccolo player in high school, so um, I, I do have a little bit experience with the instruments, but um, yeah, using them in a Disney style production is always so much fun because again, they have such a unique color. So before we really dive into the ins and outs of the, of the arrangement, if you don't have my orchestration essentials guide yet, I definitely wanna give you that as a companion guide because that kind of goes through my general process when it comes to starting and completing an orchestral mock-up. So when it comes to deciding what instruments go in, how do I decide what elements get what, um, and what's the process kind of look like to decide which instruments go where and all of that. So it's totally free, it's very systematic. If you wanna check it out, just click the link in the box below. It'll take you straight there. And again, it's my gift to you for checking out this video. I hope it's super helpful for you. And yeah, I just wanna give you that uh, before we start here. So anyway, <clears throat> let's kind of dive in, talk about, uh, what the approach is here. So generally, when it comes to this more romantic, melodic style of music, uh, I like to think of all the sections as having a pretty balanced approach. So maybe some sections will have a more string-heavy balance or string-heavy melodic line, let's say, whereas other sections should also have a woodwind-heavy or woodwind feature uh, you know, line or counter melodies or whatever it is where, and then the brass, you know, they, they can also, uh, have their own chance to shine as well. Now, generally, because most of the, the pieces here that I'm using are lighter in nature, you're not going to hear too many brass featured melodies. I tend to like to use brass more for warm chords and warm pads and also, you know, some counter melodies here and there, but it's more rare for me personally to use the brass, uh, as, completely featured melodies, prominent melodies on their own in this type type of lighter context. But woodwinds, absolutely. And they, they again, because they have so much color, they really can stand on their own. And you actually don't need too many of them in a full orchestral session as well. Whereas like strings, you would have multiple of each instrument, right? 16 violins, um, you know, 12 violas, 10 cello, whatever. Woodwinds, you really only need one to two of each because again, their, their timbres are so unique and they can really cut through the the orchestra or at least enhance existing textures. So if you take a look here, um, I've actually brought in the MIDI as well. So this is all the woodwind MIDI and these are the bounced audio tracks with the exception of the very first track. This one here is the flute track. And if we take a look at the actual instruments I chose, we have flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon. Um, so that, that's kind of the, the standard four. Then we have the alto flute, English horn, uh, contra bassoon for the super low end. And then I have the Hollywood winds measure, let me see, major scales, uh, tutti staccato, and then the unison tremolos as well from Hollywood winds. Solo English horn, I believe I brought that in from uh, Berlin, Berlin woodwinds, the soloists, just uh, because it has a really beautiful sound. So I really wanted that in there. And uh, another scales patch, uh, flute trills, piccolo legato, uh, just to accentuate some of the, the melodies later. So let's kind of take a look here. Um, if you just take a look at the overall MIDI, you see that each instrument has ample time to rest and to breathe. So, you know, if you look at the oboe, for example, it only plays occasionally in certain colors, in certain moments, and then there's long passages of where it doesn't have to play. And then when it does play, it plays for, you know, let's say an extended period so it can really feature something or double something, right? And all of these instruments have a specific purpose. So why don't we just solo these up? and have a listen. So this is the intro. Respond with the oboe. And then the bassoon and alto flute kind of come in together with a warmer texture. So we have the clarinet and the English horn kind of doubled together here. Flute doing some counter melodies up here. Now flute takes back over the melody. And I believe I doubled that with the solo oboe as well. So 
So you hear that counter melody there in the clarinet, whereas we have the oboe and flute double together. Now the strings are taking over now, so we have the clarinet just for some counter melodies. Let's go around over here. Let's just go the distance. Flute and bassoon playing together in harmony. Hear how that alto flute has a bit of its own counter melody there. And in this next section, I wanted to use the solo English horn as the main feature here. Okay, on solo here. You hear it's just the English horn and the piano playing together. Then in the second half, as we talked about in the last video, these strings now come in to warm it up further. clarinet come in to support the flute. Strings take over, but now we have these other instruments helping along as well. So flute, playing the melody, clarinet, bassoon, and the contrabassoon helping the bottom end as well, right? <clears throat> Just to let it go. So flute continues here. This is kind of, by the way, the flute here is kind of doubling the brass, so like the French horns and all that. But uh, generally here, you see the the contra bassoon is really playing a role here because uh, I wanted a bit more of an emphatic bottom end, you know. Whereas the other parts, like Whole New World, Go the Distance When She Loved Me, these are lighter in nature, but Can You Feel the Love Tonight, Let It Go, they're more romantic, they're more passionate, so it just made sense to emphasize the low end by outlining that bass with the contra bassoon. I believe the tuba is also uh, helping the bottom end there too. And then let's take a look at this next part. So now we're transitioning into For the First Time in Forever. Listen. So in addition to the strings playing short notes, we have the woodwinds playing those short notes as well. Just you can hear the ensemble, right? It has that lightness, it has that crispiness, and I think that really complements the strings very well. Of course, those Hollywood wind scales, very nice. And that's it for that. No more uh, 2D staccatos here, very calm. No, no woodwinds here, I'm pretty sure. Just the occasional uh, scale, as you can see, that's it. Let's go here. Respond with the flute. Oboe kind of comes along for the ride. Here you can see no regular flute happening here, but the only woodwind here is the alto flute, which has a very warm mellow tone. Playing the melody here. And it's just the alto flute and the harp, by the way. Strings come in, choir comes in around it. Now, string heavy here, so no need for the woodwinds here. Flute comes in for contrast, hold back the energy. Bobo comes in support. And then, string light again. But now we just have the oboe and some of those flute trills, as you can see, playing that part. But the oboe here is just serving the counter melody purpose. Then we get to reflection. So we have the clarinet basically playing the melody with the strings doubling, but the oboe is basically taking the counter melody role. Right. 
And let's, let's skip a little further here. So Beauty and the Beast. I think I basically copied some of the orchestration techniques from the original here. Um, just wanted to have them play some counter melody, some call and response stuff. So if you listen, it's mainly strings, piano, and then the, the woodwinds are doing a lot of counter melody stuff. Now I'm bringing the solo bassoon to double the cello in the second half. Oh, what comes in with it? Come down together, add the extra color. Right. And then we continue to I See the Light. Now bassoon here is just playing counter melody. So the oboe is actually playing that counter melody as well, a little bit. Now it's just counter melodies. Playing that nice F7 chord. And now flute is the melody, so I definitely want to bring that out, in the automation at least. <laughs> Now Bassoon and Alta Flu come in to finish the job. Nice. And then relax. Yeah, so generally by looking at this MIDI data, you can tell that less really is more. Uh, the thing about the woodwinds is because, again, they have such a unique color to them, I really want to give them um, a special feeling when they do come in. I don't want them to just be there and, you know, the, I don't want the ear to get overly used to them. I actually want them to serve a special purpose when they do come in, you know? So the flute here, I mean, it's one of my favorite woodwind instruments. I, again, I'm a little biased, but, you know, it, it doubles a lot of lead lines. Then there's a lot of counter melody stuff that happens in that upper range. But because the the, the flute doesn't necessarily cut through the mix very well in its quieter dynamics. I want to take advantage of that and enhance some of the existing colors. So maybe that's string doubling, maybe that's playing a soft counter melody on its own, you know? You can do a lot there. Now the oboe and the bassoon uh, have more unique characteristics. So I definitely want to use those to beef up existing textures as well, but the oboe I can also use for more uh, solo lines like the solo English horn here. You know, sometimes I'll use the English horn over the oboe because of the warmer nature, and the same goes for the uh, alto flute over the regular flute, you know? Um, and then, yeah, in terms of the actual additional textures, you know, the, the scale runs, the trills, the tremolos, like all of that stuff is ear candy, in my opinion. Like that, that just is there to fill up the empty gaps, but keeps the interest high. So that's the whole point of using those additional textures and... Um, it usually is very effective in this sort of arrangement. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Again, you can kind of see that generally less is more. I haven't done too, too much here because a lot of this is uh, string based. As you can see in terms of the strings, they're pretty much playing in most of the piece, maybe like 85% the strings are present. Whereas for the woodwinds, they're present for about, you know, 30%, 40% in general, in total. Um, so they're more of an additional color, whereas the strings for me play more of a fundamental role in establishing the, the melody, the harmony, and then the woodwinds are a very nice alternative additional color as well. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions about that. Uh, comment below. I'm more than happy to, to, to chat about that. And yeah, hopefully that's helpful. And you know what? If you Again, if you don't have that orchestration essentials guide yet, and you do want to know how I approach every mock-up, every arrangement from scratch uh, through my five-step process. I want to give that to you absolutely free. So just click the link below. It'll take you straight there. And again, uh, it's my thank you to you for checking out this uh, video today. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next part, part five, and we'll talk about the brass next. So I'll see you in that one. Take care. Bye-bye.